Let's step outside the uh, box. We're going to have a look at some of the, uh, how some of the rest of the media is um, covering uh, the election and the rest of the uh, world papers. Lauren Bearstecker is joining us here on set. Lauren, all eyes, of course, are on the US election. Take us through some of the uh, reaction in the US papers, first of all. Well, it's crunch time for the US stewards, and uh, the election is largely viewed as a crucial turning point for uh, the country's future. Now, The Guardian even calls it a battle for America's soul, uh, with the two candidates standing, of course, for fundamentally opposed values and principles and that are likely to take the country in opposite directions. The newspaper even argues uh, that the vote will shape the future of the planet, not only in terms of its political direction, uh, but also because Biden appears to be the only candidate who will take steps uh, to protect the environment. Now turning to Politico, uh, which says America is awaiting the verdict on the Trump era and argues that only a, a democratic a landslide could effectively turn the page on this chapter, uh, as uh, that's the only scenario uh, whereby Republicans would stop supporting Trump. Now, obviously, this was written before the results started pouring in, and it looks now like that ship has sailed. Of course, uh, it really is the waiting game, waiting for all those other results to come in now. What are the newspapers saying about uh, the actual vote counting process, how long it could actually take now? Well, that's the question posed by uh, Vox, which uh, is attempting to explain why this is taking so long and uh, how long we can expect to, to wait and when we can see those definitive results. And according to the article, we may not know for, for days who actually wins the election, uh, largely because of several states opting to uh, count mail-in ballots after all votes have been cast, which is, of course, an extremely lengthy process uh, whereby officials must verify uh, each individual ballot uh, and whether it was cast properly. Well, of course, a lot was sent uh, before the election about possible voter intimidation and violence as well in the build-up to this election. But voting were largely unfolded without incidents. Uh, what are the papers saying about that, Lauren? Well, the election, according to the Washington Post, uh, unfolded mostly in peace after a season of fear and concerns of armed militias showing up at the polls have been largely unfounded, as it turns out. Uh, the paper reports that despite my, some minor, mostly technical issues, uh, the fears of this widespread unrest did not materialize, uh, largely thanks to a massive police presence across the country. However, uh, the author here warns us that violence could still erupt after the results come in. Yeah, that post-electoral violence is something um, we've been seeing a lot of concern about. Uh, the international press have been particularly um, picking up on that as well, haven't they? Well, that's right. And many uh, foreign papers are actually concerned about how this violence could impact their communities, their diaspora in the U.S., uh, looking at, for instance, the Jerusalem Post, uh, which is a uh, warning against unprecedented possibility for unrest, uh, especially by far-right groups against the Jewish community in the event uh, of a Joe Biden win. Uh, turning to Arab news, meanwhile, also, uh, also saying America is preparing for uh, post-electoral violence and arguing uh, the results could reignite tensions uh, that we've seen during the George Floyd and Black Lives Matter protests. And now, um, the article does even point out that many cities have been bracing for this, setting up barricades and closing some shops in pre preparation for this potential unrest. So just check, there's seven um, states still to declare, which means, of course, it's time to start laying out scenarios, um, depending on who wins the election. Take us through uh, some of them, Laurel. Well, there are many possible scenarios, of course, and the New York Times warns us that whoever wins, America must must brace for a lengthy and vicious struggle as the issues that have framed this election will not go away. And the article argues the campaign has left uh, the American people more divided than ever, uh, and many are now looking at politics as they would uh, a religion, meaning not as uh, economic self-interest uh, potential, but more in terms of fundamental cultural values, and those are divisions that are likely to persist, potentially even boil over after the election. And now The Guardian's looking at another uh, potentially worrying scenario, which is uh, Trump refusing to accept defeat. And the president has repeatedly suggested he may reject the results and has refused to commit to a peaceful transition of power. And now the article argues that him trying to cling on to the presidency is looking a real possibility, especially in, this, uh, in the midst of this pandemic, where, and I quote, changes to voting habit have made it easier for him to level accusations of fraud, to exploit the general confusion, and even to create a scenario where he could prematurely declare himself the winner of the election. 
But maybe the, the general feeling in the US is best as summarized by this cartoon, which shows a crawling Uncle Sam uh, crawling through a desert with a banner representing the finish line of the election in the distance. And uh, we see Uncle Sam praying for it not to be a mirage and for it all to be finally over. Can we all agree with that one? <laughs> I think we <laughs> can. Old Uncle Sam there crawling towards the finish line. Thank you very much, Lauren, Lauren Bessler, looking at some Thank of the uh, reactions uh, for you so far in uh, the press in the US and around the world as well.